you too can own a sailboat. In the past, the idea of owning a sailboat was out of reach for most people. Now many people are discovering with a little elbow grease that they too can have a sailboat. For many years, the cost of monohull sailboats has plummeted. In this video, I will show you how to have the sailboat of your dreams. It will be divided into two parts. Part one is about finding an affordable sailboat, what to buy and what to look for. Finding the right sailboat is the most important thing, but the sailboat you buy will most likely require some work. And part two is about what work might need to be done after you buy it, which will also require more money to turn it into the sailboat of your dreams. But I did this and so can you. Before I begin, please subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified of new videos. I bought my sailboat on eBay for $202.50. Yes, you heard that right. Do be aware that I went through a boat charity on eBay. And there is an additional cost of $300 for the paperwork fee on top of the winning bid. This is the original screenshot of my boat the day I won the bid for it. The first thing you need to do is know what you are looking for. Often people purchase boats without realizing what they are getting into. I wish I had this video to watch when I was looking at sailboats. It is very important to look for boats that have these qualities. I bought my sailboat through Boat Angel. I recommend it as a charity. Or there are other sailboat charities on eBay as well. Number one is a fiberglass sailboat that floats, for obvious reasons. And number two, a boat that is trailerable and has a trailer. Why is this important? Because this way you don't have to pay the marina to store it or to take it in or out of the water for you. This is actually the largest cost savings of owning a trailerable smaller boat. Many large sailboats go for really cheap at the end of the summer because the owners can't afford the marina storage fees anymore. I would just about bet that these people would rather trade a trailerable small sailboat for their huge honking sailboat at the end of the year. This is a photo of a boat that is not truly affordable. The reason being is that this boat isn't trailerable because it's too big and the keel is too large and would require professional movers at additional costs. It looks inexpensive, but there are hidden costs owning a boat this size. And those costs are primarily marina fees. The marina brokers even have a hard time selling them. And most owners end up selling them for a huge loss. Some marinas even destroy boats that they can't sell. The idea is that you store the sailboat in your yard when it isn't being used instead of a marina. You will need to tow the sailboat via a truck to where you are storing it for free. And number three, make sure that the sailboat you are buying has a mast, a boom, sails, that includes a mainsail and a jib, also running rigging, an outboard motor that runs, and a rudder with a tiller. I would tell you to get a sailboat without a mushy deck, but with Boat Angel, you won't get the option to look at it first. Also, most small trailerable sailboats going for a steel will be old, and old most likely has water in the core of the deck. It is possible that the boat you will purchase is located far away. You will have to pick it up yourself, so make sure it will be doable for you to get. My boat was in Pennsylvania, and I live in upstate New York. These are some of the things you will need after you have purchased your boat in order to go and pick it up. You will need to have a truck that can pull the weight of your boat and it will have to have a way to hook up the brake lights at the back of the truck from the tongue. Part two is what might need to be done after you buy your sailboat. You will most likely hate the interior of the boat, but don't fret too much about the cosmetics when buying a boat. You can make it great with some work. It's possible that the sailboat you have will have a swing keel or a dagger board. Mine has a swing keel. It's unlikely that it will have a fixed keel. That's the way small sailboats are to fit on a trailer. You will most likely have to replace the tires on the trailer, and maybe even the lights. So you'll need to be prepared when you pick up the sailboat. Also, it is important that you have the title, and you will have to register it and the boat when you get it back home. For safety, when you pick up the sailboat, be sure that you have about six ratchet straps to fasten the boat to the trailer. The reason being is that you may lose the boat as you're driving down the road if you don't have the boat fastened to the trailer. Also, you will need several cords of rope to tie the mast down to the top of the boat. The boat will probably be old. Mine is 48 years old. These old ones are actually great because it was when the fiberglass was made thicker. 
the boats will be stronger than the new boats being made today. I'm glad to give advice on buying a small sailboat. Send me the link and I'll look it up for you. Another advantage to buying a small boat is that you can store it in your yard and that you can work on it at your leisure. Many marinas may not even let you work on your boat yourself. The idea is to work on it and store your own boat. You can tackle just about any job yourself or with one more hand on a sailboat. I am also going to discuss with you what you might get yourself into by buying an old used sailboat and help you to avoid some pitfalls. One of those pitfalls is procrastination because you feel like you bit off more than you could chew. Also to be able to avoid the fear of not being able to solve a problem and finish the project. The key is to take baby steps when you get stuck like this. Some issues with old sailboats is that the decks may be mushy. One issue with an old sailboat is that the deck may be mushy. I ripped off my deck and dried mine out and then I refiberglassed it. Over the new fiberglass I put a teak look deck by Plastec for a teak look without the maintenance. You may have to gut the boat and redo everything. Eventually I will make a Patreon video about this and show you step by step how to do this. You will most likely need to learn how to fiberglass in order to make repairs and fix leaks. Your boat may be leaky from rain or from a hull leak. You will need to seal up all the leaks. My boat had at one time at least one foot of water in it. You can see the water line in the photo. This list may seem daunting, but it's worth it for your sailboat dream. If you get a sailboat that has a good non-waterlogged interior, you did well. You would be lucky if your boat only requires a fresh coat of paint. The windows may need to be replaced if they are fogged up. They are most likely safety glass. Have a professional cut new ones using the old windows as a template. The electric will need to be replaced most likely. This is an opportunity for you to have really efficient new LED lights. Mine was incredibly old from 1971. I had to also redo the shore power setup. And I was able to redo all the electric in my boat with a little help from a friend. You may have to drop the keel if it is a swing keel to replace the keel bolt and have the keel refinished. This may require you building a lift. I dropped the keel to replace the keel bolt. To do so, I made a cradle for it. I replaced the keel winch and keel cable as well. If you lose your swing keel while sailing, you may also lose your boat. If you aren't keeping the original gel coat on the exterior of the boat, which is your standard white color that you usually see, you'll most likely have to sand the whole boat and repaint it. And you will have to repaint the hull with anti-fouling paint and the deck with paint meant for boats above the waterline. Unless you want to keep the natural white gel coat for above the waterline if it hasn't already been painted. On the inside of the boat, it will most likely smell like mold you will have to throw away all of the old fabric and foam cushions. You will have to get rid of the mold on all the hard surfaces and you may have to scrape the inside and repaint it all. I worked for weeks scraping the old interior paint off. If I didn't, the new paint was just going to peel off like the old paint. You will have to discover all the leaks and seal them up with caulk. When it's raining, I sometimes sit in my boat to see where it might leak. My windows leaked because I didn't put enough caulk in when I replaced them, and I had to add more. It leaked around the bolts where the deck and hull came together. Some of the running rigging in terms of things like turnbuckles will need to be replaced, or stays. The cables will need to be inspected for damage. You may have to patch the sails. You can do this with basic sewing. Don't get a boat without sails, or this could be a huge expense, like $3,000 for one sail. If you have to replace a sail, you can make a new one. You can sew it with a regular sewing machine. Look at one sized right for the boat you have. I recommend sail right. You could save a lot of money doing it this way. The sail could cost only $800 for a kit from sail right. This is an additional thing I did to personalize my boat. I made a new hatch and replaced the old hatch with a new wood one with swing doors. You can see it in these pictures. Many of these old sailboats are gems in the rough. Remember that you don't have to attack all the work at once or have all the money at once. Just work on it very slowly because it is going to be stored in your own yard. Which like I said is the major cost savings of buying a trailerable sailboat. And you doing all the work yourself. And that will bring you the sailboat of your dreams. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment and ask any questions you might have about buying a sailboat.